Blessings. Hello. Good night, good night, good night, good night. Everybody is well on this full moon we have going on here. Uh, welcome everyone um, to um, a moon chat uh, with the Vagina Lady. Uh, I have been doing these chats with Alina uh, for the past two months, uh, but we weren't able to connect this time. So I am here um, presenting to you guys what uh, I see, I feel, and what is there uh, in terms of how this full moon and how the energy right now can be affecting us. Um, so, uh, of course, as you guys know, uh, I love to start off with prayer first, and then we are going to get started. Dear God, we all are grateful and so happy that you have given us and continue to give us the love, the protection. It, it softens our heart and makes us realize even how more powerful you are. We ask you now to just surround us, continue to love us, and allow peace to just come to our hearts and to our minds. Amen. Okay, so full moon tonight. Full moon is in... Full moon in Aquarius, okay? Um, so anyone with any Aquarius in their natal chart... Um, this could be even more powerful for you, okay? And that could be anywhere in your natal chart. That could be your actual sun sign, your moon sign, your ascendant sign, your whatever house that is. Um, now, Aquarius is an air sign, okay? And when it comes to the full moon, the full moon and the new moon, it's usually like there are opposites, right? So we have an Aquarius full moon right now, which is air. And the opposite of that would be a Leo. And Leo is fire, right? Now, when it comes to an air sign in general, there are certain things that um, come with an Aquarius energy, right? Uh, one of those things is like focus, Um Aquarians have a real way of focusing to what they want, you know, their dreams, the aspirations. Uh, they usually have a tendency to communicate a lot. Uh, they also have this, this, what should I say, this uniqueness also about them. Um, so any kind of what should I say? Any kind of Aquarian energy would usually have something like that when it comes to the person. Now, we want to use this Aquarian energy to get the best out of ourselves. That's the whole reason of trying to figure out what energy is going on at that time. Because now we can like dig down deep and figure out how we can use it to make us be the best versions of ourselves. So in Aquarius, maybe if you have it in your natal chart or not, you can manifest and you can use this energy. So if it is to start taking some time and focusing, you know, taking that time and focusing on, you know, your future and your goals and your aspirations and writing them down and visualizing them. It's a great time to do this with this Aquarian energy. Another great thing that, you know, you can also do is to be able to express yourself. You want to talk or you want to heal the introvert, I guess, in you. Okay, nothing wrong with being an introvert, but sometimes we're an introvert because of fear or because of 
um, uncomfortableness or something like that. Um, but we want to make sure that when it comes to communication, we're communicating and not just communicating, but communicating well, right? People can understand communicating, not just verbally communicating with your hands, communicating, you know, with your eyes, communicating in any kind of way. Um, it's really, really great to do that right now. Right. Um, Guys, a lot of things are shifting. A lot of things are shifting. This, I mean, I would say <clears throat> last year, end of last year, like November, my Reiki, my Reiki practitioner said to me that she hopes that I'm ready for what's coming, you know? And I was like, what do you mean? You know, and she was like, I really hope that you are ready for the healing that you are going to have to bestow. And I thought to myself, well, I feel like I bestow, you know, that type of healing energy on a daily basis. You know, that is the norm for me. Never did I think that she was actually going to be talking about this type of healing where the whole entire world is wanting or craving or looking for this healing the whole world is looking for it like it's completely insane and it is like even if you're not looking for it it's coming for you like the whole world is getting this purge and this detox and this you know, then the, the, the release that it needs. And if we in ourselves fight that purge and that release and that whatever, and don't absorb these positive things that we need, we're going to find that we're going to feel more depleted. We're going to be unhappy. What, what we are trying to manifest won't come to be. You will be having ailments physically and emotionally and spiritually because you're fighting this natural thing that's trying to happen. So it's important for us to remember that with all of this change and with all of this healing and with all of all of this that's going on, we can use the sky, natal charts, astrology, whatever you want to call it, and make it work for us. Make it work for us. So, of course, as I said, you know, when it comes to this air sign, Aquarius, um, there are a lot of positive things. You know, we're talking about, you know, imaginative and very, you know, in terms of communication, they want to communicate and they crave to communicate well. Um, very progressive, very forward thinking, very all of that, which are great things, which I said, as I said before, we can kind of like, you know, tap into that, you know, to make help us to be the best versions of ourselves. But with every positive, there's always a negative. And so the negative things really come into like this. Um, Aquarius are very like fixed. It's very hard for you to change them, to change their thought, to change their thought process. Because remember, they are dreamers and they are thinkers and they have thought this out. So for you to come and be like, oh no, you should probably do it this way. They're going to be like, please, I've thought this out. I've done this. I have planned. I have looked at every direction and this is the way I should go. Um, so it does have a positive, but it also has that negative in terms of because sometimes you're wrong and sometimes, you know, and so, you know, you're not, it's, 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 it's not good to be easily persuaded, but you're even like, it's even, it can even come to a fault. So we also want to think about that as well in this time too, you know, where you're not being too, you know, stubborn you know, um, in your ways just to be so, or just to prove a point or just to, but to just be honest and be free and just, you know, communicate because of course Aquarius is all about communication. Uh, so because of this Aquarian energy, right. And of course this Leo energy, because of course we are in the sun sign of Leo, but the moon is in Aquarius you find now that there are different body parts, right? There are different things that we can also connect with 
um, because of the sign. When it comes to Aquarius, um, a lot of things like the knee, the shin, um, the ankles, uh, all of that, all of that type of um, lower parts of the leg uh, with um, Aquarian energy. Uh, it also, the, the circulatory system as well has a lot as well to do with um, the Aquarian energy as well, okay? So being able to do things to help your circulatory system more would be great. If that is exercise, if that's a castor oil treatment, if that is, you know, um, detoxing, creating, using some heat, something. Um, it would be a great time to really flush the lymphatic, um, the circulatory system or pr promote healthy, should I say not flush, promote healthy circulation um, at this point um, during this time. Uh, another thing is, of course, the heart, because Leo is about the heart, right? Um, and, you know, all Leos love heart. When they love, they love. When Leos do anything, they do it. You know what I mean? They're very extreme. Um, but the heart right now um, is something that we also want to focus on. And not just the physical heart, but the emotional heart. The emotional heart. So we want to do things to promote that. Just like how we want to do things um, to promote circulation. And we want to do things to promote, you know, the ankles in terms of like massaging your ankles more than you would usual maybe during this time, you know, um, maybe if you would wear high heels all the time and, uh, maybe you can wear them a little less during this time to take up a little bit of pressure. Or if you would usually, you know, do a certain exercise that puts a lot of pressure on the, on the ankles. Maybe try and do some different ones during this time right now. Uh, because, of course, we don't want to strain, stress any type of body part, right? So when I was talking about the heart, I really want us to think about things like meditation and visualization. Uh, when it comes to healing the heart and healing the 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 emotions of ourselves because a lot of times it's the it's the heart that gets blocked and creates issues because we are hurt pain this and then that creates circulatory issues you know it creates all these other types of blockages you're you're you 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 bleed more than you should or you don't bleed when you should or you create fibroids or all of these types of things start to happen because of the heart. I am so blown away by looking at women on a daily basis and seeing the pain that they walk around with. Every single day. The pain, the heaviness, the chip on the shoulder, the defense already. Like, nothing has even happened. Like, I've never seen it before. I don't know you. I don't know. Like, you're, the, the, the defense that these women have, a lot of women have, right? And that, again, is the heart. The heart has probably been hurt too much. The heart has not healed. So when a lot of these things happen, and it doesn't have to be relationship things in terms of man, woman, relate, um, romance, woman, woman, romance, it's... It's not about, it doesn't have to be about that. It can be literally about the issues with your mom, the issues with your dad, the issues that you have with your siblings. These heart things that we're just not tapping into. We're not trying to heal. We're not looking into. We are, especially as women, what we are saying is we are strong. We can do anything a man can do, which we can. Well, majority. Okay, I mean, I, I can't spit sperm out of me, right? Uh, but we not only can be strong, but we have to be strong to be heard, to be able to stand up in a man's world, right? So we create this not just because of pain or, you know, you, you hurt me, but also because of survival. 
we have to survive. And in surviving, unfortunately, it creates some hardness. And it is that hardness and that defense mechanism is a huge issue. So during this time, during this Leo and Aquarius time, I really, 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 really suggest that you help do a little release. Do a little heart stuff. Don't be surprised if you're really sensitive right now. Aquarians are so sensitive. My son is Aquarius. He is sensitive. Like, cry like this, like this, right? Um, so don't, don't be hard on yourself. Why am I being so emotional? Accept the fact that this is just the time and just go with it, express it, release it, and then keep it moving. The more you mm it is the worse it's going to be. It's something that you just have to go through. You have to flow, let it flow through you. It's like, it's like when you're going to give birth, right? And women are giving birth and women come tell to me all the time that, oh my God, it's so painful and it hurts so much. And you know, it's, it's just, and don't get me wrong. Yes. Childbearing, child, childbirth is not easy if you don't have the tools. Okay. But if you go with the wave and go with what's happening and going with the contractions, which I call surges, and going with that, you find that your body is flowing. It is the tension that creates the stress and the strain. It is. So with our heart, same thing. We have to release. We have to just go with it. Go with it right now. Go with it. It's an emotional little bit time. Go with it. So when I told you guys before that, you know, in terms of heart, you know, and um, there's also another body part, which is like the brain, right? And so because Aquarius is like this thinker and this dreamer and this, you know, you know, progressive movements type of thing, uh, the brain is very affected. So stimulating the brain during this time and awakening um, the, the, the energies uh, near the brain is also important. So the muscles, the energy, all of that. Uh, so when it comes into may it be the brain, may it be the heart, there are different meditations and visualizations that we can do to stimulate or balance or cleanse or whatever it is that needs to happen for that part of the body. So this would be a great time to do that. Go on YouTube, put on a visualization for heart, heart chakra. Okay. Do one. 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever, put it, do it when you're going to bed. You might just fall asleep and not wake up until tomorrow morning and you would have felt like you had the best rest ever. Not lying to you, promise, right? Um, also, you can do things for your third eye, your pineal, which is in your brain, okay? Uh, so you can put in, you know, visualizations or meditations for that. Uh, I am going to be coming out with some of those um, personally myself uh, because I do meditations all the time for for people, for clients, of course, for myself, for my children. Um, but I want to be able to um, show that side of me um, and also help with the healing because uh, a lot of times people don't even know where to go or what to do. Um, so for me to be able to just post it uh, so that someone can see it, uh, even if it's just by coincidence, book ups, then, you know, that's great, right? Getting the information out there. So doing things uh, like going to YouTube, finding that um, third eye, visualization for third eye, visualization for the heart, That'd be really, really good for you to do. 
Uh, now, in terms of you guys know me, when I'm talking about anything, I'm always going to get into, you know, the sound therapy, the meditation, the stones, the herbs, the all of that. Um, and so, of course, I'm going to go into that now. So, uh, healing stones, as all of you, I don't know how many of you are, you know, but I'll just run through it really quickly. Healing stones um, are, or crystals, uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of them. Uh, they are used to be able to heal our bodies depending on the type of property that is in the stone. And so just like um, in terms of different organs in your body that you could use stones to heal, um, stones can also help with different emotional aspects as well. So during this time, uh, because we're talking about things like heart, it is always great to have or to use or to um, connect with, keep close, a rose quartz, okay? Um, rose quartz is all about the heart. It is definitely a softener. It definitely is a releaser for the heart. It definitely brings nurturing. Uh, so rose quartz is really good to have right now. Rose quartz can also be used as a tincture. So guys, if you're interested in tincture stuff, there are certain, um, certain stones or crystals that can be used as tinctures. So if it is that you want to try tinctures, make sure you always look up that stone be a tincture. Rose quartz is one of those that can be. You can put it in water. Um, so I, so if you wanted to do that, I would make sure you clean your stone. Um, I would always use, uh, apple cider vinegar, uh, in some very warm water. I would say maybe a tablespoon for maybe like a cup of water. Uh, I would put my stone in there. Uh, after it's cooled down a little bit, please, cause it will crack. You don't want your stone to crack. Uh, after that, I would rinse it off, um, under some cool water and then um, you can then put it in your glass. It has to be glass, glass jar, glass something, and pour your healthy water, guys, healthy water inside of it. Healthy water will not, is definitely not pipe water. Please don't do this with pipe water. Um, I would say purified water, um, depending on the area, depending on the country you're in, I would say spring water if you're in Jamaica. Definitely spring water can be used. Uh, US, I would not recommend spring water at all. Um, there is also um, distilled water. There is filtered water. Um, yes, if you have an alkaline machine, definitely alkaline water. If you do not have an alkaline machine and you buy alkaline water, guys, please remember that the alkaline water does not stay alkaline very long. So you might not even be drinking the water when it is alkaline. So look into that. So this is rose quartz, so that is great for right now. Um, another one that's great is, of course, the moonstone. Moonstone is always going to be good during a full moon because, of course, it's a moonstone. Uh, different types of moonstones here. I'm sure you guys probably can't even see it. I'm sure you can't. I'm sorry. Two different moonstones. Um, now, when it comes to stones, um, there are just so many that me naming a few, it's just like, no, I wanted to definitely name some that I had so I could show you guys. Um, but any type of stone that's going to be good for your heart, it's going to be good for your throat chakra or your throat, if it's going to be good for um, your brain, those are type of the stones. So for example, like amethyst, I got this amethyst in um, Africa, actually, right? It was huge and it like shrunk after years and years and years. It's so insane. Um, but yes, amethyst also is great because, of course, that is all about the brain. It helps to stimulate the brain. It helps with the pineal gland. It helps with intuition. It helps with dreaming. It helps with all of that um, intuitive nature. Uh, that is great. And, of course, that is what Aquarian energy 
is. Now, in terms of herbs, uh, there are certain herbs, and as a matter of fact, I am drinking right now a Aquarius herbal tea blend, okay? When it comes to right now, there are certain herbs have, and they're great to have because they help or heal or stimulate or balance all of these different things that happen or can happen during this time. So in terms of herbs, we have things like peppermint, uh, which is something that I guess a lot of Jamaican people will drink. Um, I'm not sure how popular that is in the U.S. in terms of something on a regular basis when you think about tea. Um, but uh, peppermint is really, really great uh, right now. Lavender is also good. So if you have lavender buds or if you want lavender buds, just hit me up. But lavender is great also to have right now or to rub on your skin if you have um, an essential oil that is lavender that is, of course, uh, healthy. You don't really want to have to rub something on your skin that you can't put in your mouth for the most part. Okay. So, so lavender would be good. Uh, blue vervain would also be great. Uh, hibiscus would be good. Uh, hibiscus, which they also call sarrel, um, in the Caribbean, uh, sarrel hibiscus. It's very good for your circulatory system. So that is one of the reasons why I have it in the womb tea that Cosmic Woman does because Saril is fantastic, fantastic for uh, that system. Uh, now, chamomile is also very good. Uh, it helps with any type of, um, it's more of a relaxer, uh, which is always great to have um, during any time, uh, especially when emotions are high. Uh, it can definitely help to calm a little bit. Now, we spoke a lot about, you know, um, the fact of Aquarian and what Aquarian, um, the Aquarian energy. And then we spoke a little bit about the Leo energy and how, you know, the opposite energies and that we can't ignore the fact that um, there are opposites. So when it comes to opposites, I just want to put something out there. Um, working on your shadow self right now. Now, who is your shadow self? What is your shadow self? Everyone has a shadow self. And now is the time that we need to start connecting with shadow self and not ignoring it or being ignorant to the fact that it is there. The shadow self is the part of ourself that we dismiss. It's the part of ourselves that no one probably really knows. It's the part of ourself that we, we, we ignore. We don't even know it's there. We don't even know. When I, was the, when, when I was first told to tap into my shadow self, I was so confused. What do you mean? How? How do I tap into my shadow self? I don't even know my shadow self. And so I started doing some research and I realized that the first place to start tapping into for your shadow self is your child self. Your child self. A lot of times the shadow self issues or the shadow self is created from the child, the inner child, that inner child. So when tapping into that shadow self, I urge everyone to start by getting into the inner child, tapping into the traumas, the pains, the 
the neglects, the sadness, the loneliness, the... Now, when I say this, this does not mean I am finding all the reasons to blame my parents and my siblings and my teachers. This is just about realizing and coming to the fact, coming to understand that these things happened and it was okay for me to feel bad when they did. Then once you have, and you can heal that inner child that, that, that then there was like, it's like when that negative thing happened, however small or large, and say you're like eight and it happened, there is this thing that, this footprint that is left at eight, that this thing, this traumatic thing, this hurtful thing, this loneliness thing that stays there. And even though you grow and you continue and you can be the most successful person in the world, who the hell cares, right? There is this thing that's left. And a lot of times it continues to affect us even though we don't, usually, we don't even know it's affecting us. So when we can tap into this child self and heal it, and heal it here, and heal it here, and heal it here, and shed it. I started, when I started to shed it, I, I didn't even know what to do with myself. Prior, oh my God, I feel like I'm going to cry right now. I am not a crier. I am. I don't sit in my feelings like that. I don't. I keep it moving. It's the Scorpio in me, I think. And it's almost like I could not hold it back anymore. The universe was creating where I had to really face it. And I guess for some, maybe that has happened for you guys. And for others, maybe you don't even realize. I don't want you to have to go through that stress and that strain and that have to burst, right? Tap into your child self. There are meditations. I'm going to be talking much more about this because this is something that we need to highlight. Tap into that child self and start to heal those things. You will realize that you're going to start healing your shadow self. It's really amazing. It has done wonders for me. I promise you, no joke, no lie. Check it out. Okay, so I want to just go and check and see if anyone has any questions before I continue. Um, isn't Amethyst Pisces? Okay, so Amethyst is Pisces in ter yes, Amethyst is Pisces in terms of that. Um, but Amethyst is good for the brain, okay? And so because it's good for the brain and the pineal gland, that is why we'd use it at this time. Oops. Yeah. To get a response, okay, I'll send you a text when I'm finished. Um, what's the topic? Okay, so tonight I was just talking a little bit about um the new the full moon that's happening tonight, which is in Aquarius, um, which is an air sign and uh how that can affect us um and how to use that, how to use that energy to the best of our ability. Uh, if anybody right now is feeling the urge to want to do charity or to give or to do anything like that, I really suggest this is a great time. Aquarius energy is really great for giving and, um, and charity and, and humanity and that type of thing. So definitely, whichever way that you can do that and give, I really suggest that you do that. Uh, it will really, 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 really benefit you. Um, now, for a full moon in general, it is usually a lot about things coming to an end and completion. 
And so it is really a great time to release certain things. Release um, release the things that no, no longer serve your higher good. So if you want to get a piece of paper and you want to write down, I release blah, blah, blah. I release the pain on others knowing and not knowing. I release the lack of nurturing that I have not that I have that I haven't received. I release whatever, the impatience that I have on a daily basis. Release, release, release. Write it down. When you're finished writing down all your releases, I mean, you can do a lot of things. You can burn it, you can, I'd suggest you light it a fire. That's what I'm going to do tonight. After this live is over, I am going to take, I actually already have a lot of mine written down of what I'm releasing. Um, I am going to take, I'm going to fold it up. I'm going to light it on fire. I am going to make it catch a fire and release that shit. Right. Um, so I suggest you guys doing that too. If you have the time, how do you tap into your child self? Okay. So what I would suggest you do, if you're interested in that, send me a DM on the vagina lady page. Okay, send me a DM there or send me a message on um, one of the Jamaica, the Jamaica or the US number. Send a message there, a WhatsApp message, and I can send you a few things that you can use to tap into child self. Okay, um, they're all free. Don't worry about it. You don't have to pay. Um, but I will send you things that I have actually used. Uh, and then you might realize that you also find other things as you go on. Any other questions? Um, now, I know that every time I do this, and usually I do this with Alino, um, we talk a little bit about natal charts. And I want to highlight that again. A uh, natal chart is a map of you, who you are and who you can become and what you can become. Um, and it is basically based off of where the sun, the moon and the planets are at the time of your birth, depending on your location. And so it is really, really important to be able to get that natal chart, get it done, do it. Um, the, 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 we all, I mean, the roadmap is like, here you go. Like, why, why are we not tapping into that? We have to bring awareness to this natal chart thing. Uh, I have gotten my children's natal charts done and it has helped me in a great deal in how to deal with them. It has helped. It has helped. It has helped. It has, um, really, really, really helped me to navigate because we say all the time, we wish the children had a road, we had a, you know, a, 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 a instruction manual, you know, for the children, because of course, every child is different. You can't do everything with all of them the same way. And so this is really a great, great way. So think about that. Think about getting that done. Think about not just looking it up online, but having someone explain it to you so you can have an understanding. I had my 13 year old go to Alina. Of course, she and I met first. Um, we ran down his natal chart. Um, well, he's not 13 yet. He's 13 in two days. Uh, and then after uh, she had a session with him and she ended up doing that. Um, and I mean, in terms of telling him what she saw and what this is and asking him questions and getting him really to understand. And it has been, you know, 
don't get me wrong, there are still bumps in the road, okay, of course. But it has really allowed me, and as I go on with this tool, because I haven't had this tool for more than a month, it's probably been just a month. Um, I would, I, it, it has just been like fantastic, fantastic. She has helped so, 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 so much. Um, so I can't say enough about getting your natal chart done. I can't say enough about looking at your children, looking at your significant other. Guys, let me tell you something, right? If you're interested, okay, if you're married already, then you get salt. I just saw the thing set up, right? But if you're looking into someone, if you're about to date someone, guys, look at their natal chart. Is this person going to help you blossom and bloom into what you're supposed to be? Or is this person going to restrict you? What is going to happen? Look at it. I'm telling you, life is going to be better. If I had known this shit 20 years ago, life would have been very different. And you're going to say that once you tap into this angle, you're going to say to yourself, damn, if I had known, damn. Just like when I tell people about hypnobirthing and I do it with them and they're like, damn, I could have my baby and I didn't have to feel all that pain. Where the hell have I been? And let me just say, just a side note, since I dropped in the hypnobirthing thing, I have heard a few people say that when they've done their hypnobirthing, they really feel, they still feel all this pain. Something is not right. There was something not taught. There was something not done. Because I am telling you, when you are done, when you do hypnobirthing, especially if you've done the four month, the four course, which means if you've done, you've, you've done, you've come to class four times or you've done four classes, I promise you, you should not be in that type of pain. You should not at all. So seriously, guys, it is really, really, really a great thing to do. So if you want to, um, I know that, I know there are probably many people that do it. Um, you guys can look, you can investigate, you can do whatever, whatever. Um, but Alina did mine, um, which you can find her on Instagram. Um, I believe it's A-L-I-N-A-P-O-S-T-O-L, I believe. Oh, oh, she's actually here. Hold on. That's so funny. Hey, Alina. How are you, darling? You did six classes? Okay, okay. Yeah, um, yeah, so you, you did six classes. So I um, hope you feel more empowered. Hi, honey. How are you? I, I have like literally 5%. I'm on the beach. Oh, you're I'm living the life. So I, I can't stay on the live with you, and I'm so sorry because we missed this full moon. I know. My phone is 5%. But I love how you speak about <laughs> I didn't even know you were going to speak about me and astrology. <laughs> anyway, have, have a wonderful full moon, all of you who are joining Ramona. And Ramona, I hope this brought a lot of good things for you. It brought me back to Mobay, so I'm just under the full moon. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. I love it. I just, just came back from Mobay. So I was like embracing the energy last night. Um was good being able to sit down on the balcony and just, you know, get it and the pool being there and the beach and everything. It was a good, it was a nice little time. So yeah, I'm glad you're, I'm glad you're enjoying. So we'll be doing next, in two weeks time, we'll be doing the new, new moon. moon. Time. Yes, definitely. We'll be doing the new moon together for sure. Okay. To Bye everyone, darling. Bye. Have a good night. You too, honey. That was Alina. Yes. So see, I tell you, I mean, speak of the devil and the devil will appear. <laughs> um, but yeah, so guys, please tap into her, use her resources. Um, she's also, um, a psychologist. Okay. So, uh, it's really, really great to be able to get that, um, not just, okay, the map, you know, in terms of the sky and the natal chart and all of that and given to you, but also being able to help you with, you know, the emotions to navigate through that and the things that have happened. And of course, because 
let's keep it real. Everybody needs therapy. Everybody, all of us, we all need someone to speak to. We all, and if that is, and for a lot of people, I know for me, um, I am usually the one that people come to to talk to me about their problems. So yes, I have those few people in my life that I will go and I will vent and I will tell them all about the stresses and strains that I go through. Um, but I am more used to being the one that, you know, is there for the person and listening and trying to help. Um, and so I myself feel as if I need, I need, um, some, you know, to be able to release and be able to, to talk to someone as well, you know, um, without the judgment, without the blame, without the, any of this, because a lot of times we judge ourselves so much, man. I mean, what the fuck is up with that? Why are we always judging ourselves? I mean, I judge myself more than I would judge people. Like I'm here judging, like everybody's like, oh my gosh, Mona, you know, I love whatever, your shoes, your, your sh that shirt, whatever. And I will be like, well, I don't like it. And this is why. And that's it. You know, I am just so hard on myself. Um, but I think it's healthy to be, you know, to be hard on yourself in terms of being able to get the best out of yourself. That we can't, you can't be too hard on yourself. Okay. We, we, it's, it's not productive to be so or to do so. So with everything in terms of the full moon, um, and the energy that's going on, the Aquarian energy and the Leo energy, Let's try and use that. Yeah, let's try and use both energies um, to get whatever it is that we need or stimulate whatever we need or create anything. Um, if you are trying to, if you have an idea of wanting to create something or, or, or do certain things or connect with people, guys, listen, right now is great time to connect with people. If you have wanted to connect with people, but haven't gotten a chance to, this time is communication. This time, especially if you want to communicate, connect to do business or to, you know, partnership with something or something like that. This is a great, 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 great time great great time to do so because of all that's happening with the communication and the progressiveness and the the thinking about the vision of the future and you know charity and all that st great stuff great stuff oh alina wants to come on in let's do that Yes, Vanny, she is amazing. She is amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We went to school together, Vanny. I don't know if you remember. Hi. Hi, darling. How are you? I am good. How are you? Well, I'm just like, you know what? You're talking about connecting to people, and I'm like, I swear to God, it's been like, uh, I feel like six months, maybe longer, we've been trying to connect. And I here know. I went and met with Alina last night and had an incredible reading. On the eve of the full moon. Love that. Um, and I, I just wanted to, to big up you mentioning her because it's just providing that level of illumination and clarity around, you know, your life's journey and where you're destined to be. You know, even if it's just your individual perspective or individual journey is amazing. Bring it into the whole realm of parenting and your spouses, you know, your partners, business partners, it doesn't even matter. I use astrology for everything. I, I think it's such an incredibly powerful tool. So I, I just wanted to, to jump in and, and jump on that. And secondly, I had no idea that you are fucking a birthday. People yes. All the time, little mommy. Really? Yeah, man, I do hit no birthing. The time. No, man, well, send them my way, man. I definitely do hit no birthing. We do, yeah. we do, we, um, I even do them, I do them like through this type of situation. Um, but yeah. I always love the in-person, you know, those are always great. Um, but it's yeah, let them know. Exactly. Exactly. And you can demonstrate, you can do the physical demonstrations, you know, you can get the, yeah. you know, dad more involved because he's there, you know, so it's a little easier. It's a little better. I'm trying to do yeah, that and do less do doula stuff right now because it's like ugh, too much. It's like taking over my life. <laughs> Cannot manage. It can, it can and it's something, you know, I'm a natural birthing advocate. So people ask me stuff like this all the time. And I am, um, we use somebody.
somebody based out of um, Hawaii. Mm. I knew somebody based out of Hawaii, and um, it was it was an incredible experience. I used it for the, I used her for my second pregnancy, and then I did a refresher course for my third. And what an incredibly empowering experience! My third was a full home birth, um, water birth. Oh, and I love it! Yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. If you're feeling it, you're not in it. You're not in it. You're not in it. If, you, if you're not feeling it, if you, or if you are feeling it, I should say. Yeah. You, and it's such an incredible tool um, to give yourself the ability to almost, I don't know, I think Ricky Lake said it best. Every woman is destined for a beautiful birth. Um, and I, I genuinely believe that. Yes. Genuinely yes. That. They shouldn't have to be the way they are. I think we should give ourselves the ability to, though, because socially we have not been um, socialized to think that it's, it's a luxury that we can afford. Yeah, well, I mean, and that's true. I mean, none of us. I mean, when I heard about hypnobirthing, I, I didn't, I was just like, I don't even know if this is going to work, but I mean, I guess I'll try it. And when it, when it worked, my brain was totally, totally, totally blown. Like, no, but every woman <laughs> needs to know about this shit. No, where has this been? Sorry, I just have to say something. Because our darling immaculate sister, Vani, is saying she had a few for that girl. Yes. And I have to say something. I Tied or in, in, in 
client, then you really understand the ability to have your baby is due is is going to be based, or I should say, have your baby, you know, not necessarily a peaceful way, but in a way that's honoring of your spirit and the baby's spirit. Right. Is if you have the ability to replicate how you got pregnant, you have the ability to have an awesome birth. Well, let me tell you, I agree. I agree with you because apart from hypnobirthing, right? Um, I teach a thing called orgasmic birth. Okay. And to see a woman give birth using breath and touch and stimulation from her jaw or her tongue and all of these different types of things is amazing and it is it is it is the, the, listen the baby is being birthed in euphoria and bliss and heightened goodness which is the same way how that baby was created in that heightened bliss you know what I mean? It is, it is like, so when you said that, all I could think about was, oh my God, yes, I so agree with you. Yes, 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 yes. And yes. that's what I started, when I first learned about hypnobirthing, I watched a, doc, a quick documentary, and it's actually an excerpt of a, a 60 minute interview on, um, on YouTube called Orgasmic Birth. And I started looking at all of these things and I'm like, listen, this should exist for a reason. We're for really looking into this because I had wanted to be a doctor. Anybody who knows my story, I want to be an OBGYN. I was fascinated, fascinated, I should say, with how the body works. And more so after having my first child. Especially when the doctors were were so caught up on the convention and the business of the process of birth. And you know, it's funny because my OB in Jamaica has told me and admitted that he has never witnessed a natural birth that was not chemically induced. Hmm. Wow. That's huge. So my second child was his first. That's insane. He stood there and he was like, this is this is the I have ever, ever seen. That's insane. I, I labored in water. I gave birth at the hospital in my room. And it was just during the, the, the laboring. I was I was in water. I was submerged, and then I ruptured my membranes, and I went back in the shower, and I didn't I didn't submerge again. But it was an incredible, incredible experience. And then I went from that to a full home birth, nice. full home water birth. And I just genuinely feel like everyone should have the ability to have a beautiful birth. Yes, they believe in themselves and their own ability. And if you can understand the concept. Because it's hard to wrap your head around it when you're brought up in this very Western modality. It is, it is. That simulation has a place in the birthing process. Mm -hmm. No, girl, trust me. You know that you know that people think that I'm a mad woman already, right? Because I am talking about all kind of mad, all kind of madness. <laughs> For tuning in thank you so much listen i'm so so glad that elena and yourself came in and just said hi and had explained all your stuff uh guys please if you are 
and that was out. Uh, if you are not following Cosmic Woman um, on YouTube, please do so. If you are not following us, if you're not following the Vagina Lady on IG, please do so. And if you're not following Cosmic Woman on IG and you have IG, please do so. Thanks guys for tuning in. Love and light to all of you. Night, night.